What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna try to create textures for our SketchUp model using artificial intelligence. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you've been keep, keeping up to date on any of the developments in the 3D space in general lately, you know there's been a big push towards using artificial intelligence or using computers and machine learning in order to generate things like images and also 3D models. This is something that's being pushed pretty hard as a part of the whole metaverse concept because I think the idea behind that is um, they want to have this whole 3D virtual world that people can you know live in, work in, whatever, and um, they need models to actually populate that space and crowdsourcing that um, just isn't necessarily as reliable. Look at the 3D warehouse as an example. Um, but there's a bunch of different tools being created to do different things with artificial intelligence. So this, for example, is something that NVIDIA is doing to use two-dimensional images in order to create 3D models from those images. So it's something that can be used to quickly create 3D models, but the technology is still in development. I'm not really seeing anything that's creating amazing 3D models right now um, using artificial intelligence, but it is really interesting that you can type in something and this will try to generate a model. However, there are other tools out there that are getting a little bit closer to being actually helpful for what we want to do. And so in this video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see if I could use some of those tools in order to create useful textures to use inside of SketchUp. So a lot of you have probably heard of DALI. So DALI is the um, tool that basically allows you to create images by putting in a search. So for example, let's say that I wanted um, a, an image of a dog riding a horse. I could just type in dog, or let's be more specific, we'll say border collie riding a horse. And what this will do is this will use artificial intelligence in order to generate an image of what I typed in here. And so these images are actually created using artificial intelligence. So what it's doing is it's actually making these images based on what it finds and what it's learned from looking at other images on the internet. Now, obviously, if you look off to the right hand side, some of these can be a little bit horrifying um, and uh, kind of hilarious. But at the same time, it's a really interesting tool um, because, I mean, if you look at these, these actually kind of look like more realistic images. So both this one and this one to me um, look really cool. Now, if you click on this, one thing I've noticed is it sometimes gets eyes wrong, which is kind of funny as well. Um, but basically what this is doing is this is generating this from images that it's found online. Now there are like copyright issues and other things like that. I don't want to get into those in this image or I don't want to get into those in this discussion. Um, just note that this is basically looking at a ton of existing images and then creating new images based on that. However, what I would like to do is I would like to try to create textures using this tool. So let's say, for example, that I was to type in worn red brick texture and click on the option for generate. So if I look at this, this is actually able to create images of worn brick like this. However, there's a bit of a problem. And the problem is if I take this image and I download it, then I bring it into SketchUp. So I'm just going to take this and explode it, and then I'm gonna to try to apply it to a larger surface. The problem with this is it has seams, right? If I look at this, this has seams along the corners. Um, it's actually got this little color bar in the corner, which messes up the whole thing as well. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way to get rid of that, but overall, it's still a pretty cool texture. So what I wanna do is I wanna go back inside of Dali, and so I'm gonna try adding a little bit more information. So I'm gonna say worn red brick texture, seamless. And I'm gonna click on generate. And so obviously some of these can be a little uh, funkier than others. Like this one, for example, is definitely not what we're looking for, but these two on the end aren't bad. So maybe let's try this one right here. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna download it. And so it definitely still has seams but it's pretty close to matching them up. It hasn't really done a bad job of making this seamless. So we could definitely use this as a texture inside of our model. Um, one thing I don't like about this is I don't like that it puts this little image in the corner. So I'm actually gonna jump to a different tool. So this is another tool that you can use called Dream Studio, where you can type in these images. This one allows you to dictate a little bit more about the kinds of images that you can create. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in a um, stacked stone texture. 
seamless. And in this case, notice how this one gives me a certain number of images that I can generate. So I'm going to jump this up to six right here. I'm going to click on the dream button, and this is going to generate six different images based on what I've typed in. So if I look at these, your style is obviously going to vary wildly. Some of these get pretty weird because it's basically just taking a whole bunch of images and it's kind of like averaging them together, right? But I think this one right here might be a decent result. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, I'm gonna download it, and I've got a 3D warehouse model that I'm actually going to apply this one to. So I'm gonna drag this in, explode it, and group it. And then I'm gonna sample it. And so if I take that then apply it to this surface, oh, one thing you need to do with that texture is you need to make sure that it's not marked as projected right here. But I'm going to take this texture, I'm going to bring it down, maybe so that it's like eight feet wide or maybe like five feet wide like this. And I'm also going to apply it to this surface right here. And so if I look at that, that actually looks pretty good. So it's not necessarily as seamless as I would like for it to be, but it's something that I think that I could definitely use. And if you zoom out, you don't really see those seams all that much. So for me, that's pretty much a win. Now, the other thing I might do is use a tool like TomTom's Arterial Replacer in order to replace this stone with this stone. So that's an extension that you can use in order to do that. But that actually did a pretty good job. Okay, and so I actually tried to use this same tool in order to create a wood texture that would go across these boards. I actually had a lot of problems finding something that would give me just kind of like a standard wood panel, actually to the point where I ran out of credits on this tool. So I decided to switch to a different tool to create my wood um, that's more designed to work with AI and textures. And so what I did is I switched to a tool that's specifically designed to create textures with AI. So it's a more texture focused tool called with poly or poly. So note, note that with this tool to get the tileable textures, you do have to subscribe right here. I thought that I'd do that just so you could kind of see what this can create. And so I'm going to try light grain wood and see what this generates. And so this one gives me a number of different options that are a lot closer to what I'm looking for. So all I have to do is just pick one of these. And down here, I can pick a resolution and I can export the image. In this case, I'm going to click on Q job. And that's going to take this image and it's going to make it seamless and downloadable. All right. So this is the final result that this generated, and it's a lot more promising than what we were seeing before. Um, the only thing about this is it did take like three minutes um, for this image to get created. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring that image into SketchUp, and then we'll sample it, and we'll apply it to this surface. And remember, we need to turn off projected, and that actually looks pretty good. So then I'm just gonna go through and I'm going to use Material Replacer to replace this with this. We'll just do a little bit of positioning on these. All right, and we're good to go. We were able to generate these textures 100% using AI and apply them to our model. Honestly, I think they look really good. I do think they look better than the textures that we had on here before. Okay, so a couple of thoughts about this. So first off, um, the process is obviously not there yet um, for actually generating the textures that you want. I think where this is going to get even more valuable is when you can start uploading images of textures that you like and having it create things that are like those textures, right? So if I've got like a wood panel that I kind of like and I want some variations on that, being able to upload that and create variations I think is really interesting. So honestly, at the moment, it's just much faster faster to go into a texture website and just find a texture that you're looking for anyway, um, especially with like the three minute render time and everything else on that poly website. Um, it just seems like something that's a little bit more of a toy in an emerging technology right now. But that being said, I think there's a lot of possibilities. I think you're going to start seeing those image based things get incorporated into different programs. I don't know if I'm necessarily saying um, that would be the case with SketchUp, but I think it's really interesting to have the possibility of um, those AI generated textures. Now, one other thing that I don't think anyone has fully figured out is basically what the AI generators are doing is they're looking at millions of images online and then kind of like creating their own by like kind of averaging them together. You
you can kind of see that in some of the weirder things that are created. So that does create weird ownership things and other things like that that I don't think have fully been figured out yet. So a lot of people are arguing that kind of like the way that artists might paint something and they use different parts of other people's styles into their own, that it's something like that. I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on that. I'm just keeping an eye on this space in general because I think it's really interesting. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about AI and AI textures. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.